I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I can't wait for Super Mario Maker 2. I know, I know, hard to believe, right? It's not as if I made an hour and a half analysis of a 90 second trailer, or spent hundreds and hundreds of hours in the original game designing levels of my own. No, that would just be absurd, right? So yeah, I'm kind of loving what we've seen in Super Mario Maker 2 so far. It's finally adding a ton of stuff that I wanted in the original game, among tons of other things I didn't know I needed. Whether it's a new 3D world style, the revamped interface, or of course, slopes. Finally! But with all of these new possibilities come some concerns as well. Which is why I'm here to lay out my top 10 hopes for Super Mario Maker 2 based on everything that we don't know. So let's get right to it. Two screens of vertical space just isn't enough. Whether it's trying to cram in King bob mountain, or a nearly literal skyscraper in my perfect dark level, or making use of annoying workarounds to offer the illusion of climbing a mansion. Those two screens were seriously cramping my style. And now that Super Mario Maker 2 seems to have a greater emphasis on verticality with the addition of slopes, climbing with a cat suit, or even vertically scrolling levels, that two screen limit's going to get pretty annoying pretty quick if we aren't given more space. But there is hope. Because, as we broke down in our feature length analysis, while nothing in the trailer seems to go above the two screen limit of the original game, there are some pretty strange details that might be hinting at taller levels being possible. So here's hoping that's the case and that we can make levels at least three screens tall, if not many more. What could be crazier than taking objects made for a 3D game and putting them in a 2D play space? Why seeing retro 8-bit and 16-bit versions of them, of course? Yeah, we love that the Super Mario 3D World style is now a thing, but what concerns us is that not a single one of the objects introduced in that style appear in any of the other four. No 2D clear pipes, no 2D boom booms, and in fact, no 2D 3D World enemies at all. Which is a little strange considering mixing and matching is kind of what Mario Maker's all about, right? I mean, the original Super Mario Maker didn't let the fact that Bowser Jr. didn't exist until 2001 prevent him from appearing in styles that were around in the 80s and 90s. Now, it is entirely possible this was just done for the trailer, perhaps to save the 2D versions for a later reveal. But what if it wasn't? What if those objects are indeed exclusive to the 3D world style? That would be a little disappointing, and it would make us wonder what happens when you switch between different styles. Like, do the 3D world enemies just turn into the closest 2D equivalent? Such as an ant trooper into a buzzy beetle, maybe? And what about clear pipes, which could be central to your level's design? Do they just disappear? Or maybe they're just really clear? Yeah, we're really hoping that isn't what happens. Now, granted, it will be a lot of work to give every 3D world object a set of classic sprites. And likewise, a new 3D model for all the classic sprites that didn't appear in Super Mario 3D World at all. But again, that's kind of a big part of the appeal of Super Mario Maker. And lacking it would not only have a dramatic impact on not just mixing and matching, but even merely changing between different game styles. Bottom line is, it'd be a pretty major bummer if clear pipes are locked to the 3D World style, and if we don't get to see a classic Super Mario Bros. style boom boom. So in the reveal trailer, it seemed to hint at some kind of objective-based feature, as you can see a coin counter in a couple of scenes that presumably does, well, something when you grab the required amount. Maybe it causes the flagpole to appear, or perhaps it'll give you a power-up or something. Who really knows at this point, but the possibilities are what excites us, as this could encourage different types of challenges beyond just reaching the end of a level. And while I love that concept by itself, I hope that Super Mario Maker 2 takes it even further such as having an enemy tracker, where you have to take down a set amount to beat the stage, or maybe even a specific enemy type. I think it'd be pretty fun to make a stage where you have to go mushroom picking, and by picking, I mean brutally murdering. Or they could flip the entire concept on its head, requiring you to avoid killing a certain amount to keep the goal from disappearing. Basically, a pacifist mode, if you will. The more options, the better. We've said it before, and we'll say it again. Where is Super Mario Bros. 2? Okay, now I kind of get it. It wasn't originally a Mario game, of course, and I'll spare you the background details you've probably heard a hundred times before. But to many of us, it is a Mario game. And even though it may be the most different of the 2D ones, we still think it deserves its time to shine in Super Mario Maker. Especially since so many elements from that game have been adopted into the rest of the series, such as these very doors in Super Mario Maker and Super Mario 3D World, the bombs, and of course, Shy Guys, even if not in the mainline games. Hey, they are shy, okay? Now, getting the style to work properly would require a few modifications, but that's exactly what makes Super Mario Maker so great, with every game style looking and feeling distinct. And Super Mario Bros. 2 most definitely would be distinct, what with its HP-based health system and throwing mechanic. So here's how I would do it. Warp pipes become vases. Question blocks turn into plants that can be plucked from the ground, with empty ones becoming turnips. 
The Koopa Clown Car would turn into a magic carpet and otherwise would work mostly the same. And of course the goal at the end would be replaced with an orb and an eagle head. See, it really isn't that complicated. Now of course you'd want to bring in some of the classic enemies too so they have something beyond vegetables to toss around. Such as, again, Shy Guys. And while they could simply serve as a Goomba replacement in this style, we would love for them, as well as every other enemy, to be available in every style. Although we'd be okay with Bowser turning into Wart, and maybe Bowser Jr. could turn into Mauser or something. All we're saying is, is that for a game with a 2 in its name, it would be a little disappointing if the original Super Mario Bros. 2 didn't also appear here. Making mistakes is all part of the fun of Super Mario Maker, but sometimes fixing them could be a major pain. Even small tweaks could lead to major adjustments sometimes requiring you to reposition most of the entire level, which required painstakingly selecting a screen's worth of objects at a time, sliding them over, fixing anything that broke in the process, and doing it all over again for the next screen, and so on and so forth. <laughs> Don't even get me started on having to rebuild entire sections from scratch if you wanted to relocate a segment from the main area into the sub one. Oh, I had to do that so many times. So there's a couple of things Super Mario Maker 2 could do to fix this. First, allow bigger selections. Much bigger. Ideally as big as we want, even if it is most of the level. Two, let us copy selections to a clipboard or something, so we can paste them into the sub area without having to rebuild them from scratch. And three, while I don't expect it, it'd be super useful if you could add elements anywhere to a stage and have it automatically push back everything else to make room. A bit like the auto ripple function in Vegas. That's right, I use Vegas, don't add me. Sure, playing and making stages is pretty cool and all, but it's really sharing that's the heart and soul of Super Mario Maker. Because for as much as I enjoyed creating stages, I wouldn't have wasted, or I mean invested, dozens and dozens of hours making them if I knew no one was going to play them. And a key part of that sharing experience was the feedback that people could leave while playing your stage. Where the message would appear at the exact point in the stage where they wrote it. Whether it was to compliment a cool moment or complain about a cheap death creating a completely unique type of engagement that was fun for both players and the creator. But, with Miiverse going the way of Wart, I'm a little concerned about what this could mean for Super Mario Maker 2. After all, Super Mario Maker and 3DS already showed how sterile an experience can be that's completely free of feedback. So I'm really hoping that Super Mario Maker 2 has some kind of replacement in mind. After all, Splatoon 2 did, so hopefully Super Mario Maker 2 follows suit. Speaking of Miiverse, it served a second, if unofficial, purpose, as it wasn't just used for feedback, but also by creators themselves to add a story or instructions to their level, as the game otherwise lacked a proper text tool. It wasn't perfect, especially once other players started adding their own Miiverse messages to the stage, but it was pretty much the only option available, besides awkwardly spelling out giant letters using blocks or coins. Now even if Super Mario Maker 2 has a Miiverse replacement, Nintendo can still do better. And one solution would be to bring back the message blocks introduced in Super Mario World, that provided instructions when hit. But you know what, I think we can do even better. So why not skip the block entirely, and instead give us a billboard that creators can write directly on, which would allow players to read it without having to stop and hit a block first. But really, we'd just be happy with any solution that allows creators to flush out their worlds with words. Super Mario Maker wasn't just an amazing platformer, but an amazing platform too. But getting to the good stuff was harder than it probably should be, especially if you didn't want to play endless Kaizo or auto-playing levels. Now sure, Super Mario Maker did allow you to filter levels using some very rudimentary options, but it was pretty slow and cumbersome and not especially effective. It was usually better just to find cool levels online and then look them up yourself using the ID code. So there's a few things Nintendo could do to improve this. For one, have an official editor's choice list. It would be super neat if you could play levels that Nintendo employees themselves recommend. Plus, how cool would it be if you could have one of your own levels featured? Especially if they tossed a few gold coins your way or something for use on the eShop. Secondly, a proper newsfeed that featured levels your friends played, created, or shared would be quite useful. And three, let anyone create a YouTube-style playlist that consists of any level type you want. Whether created by you or someone else, you could just mix them all together. So if I wanted to make a top 10 list of ghost houses featuring, I don't know, cheap cheeps, I totally could. Sharing is already the heart and soul of Super Mario Maker. Nintendo just needs to give that feature a little bit more love. A huge part of Super Mario Maker's success was thanks to streamers playing levels from the community. But it had a major problem. It was often impossible to find the levels the creators are playing since the ID code barely appeared, if even at all, as it could be hidden by default. So I propose that Super Mario Maker 2 should lean into streaming with a proper streaming mode, which would display the level ID code and creator's name at all times. 
Another way to make Super Mario Maker 2 more social would be by adding leaderboards to every level, as it would help to encourage not just replayability, but also a healthy sense of competition. Although, it should be up to the creator to determine what kind of leaderboard to display, whether one based on a best time or a high score. I mean, isn't it about time that the point tally finally does something in a Mario game? Another great way to encourage interaction would be to let us share levels that are still work in progress online with our friends before officially publishing them. That way they can test them out and give the creator feedback. You know, a bit like posting a video unlisted on YouTube. At any rate, the best way to make Super Mario Maker 2 more social would be by adding... That's right, multiplayer would be such a fantastic addition to a game already bursting with great ideas. And thankfully, this artwork might be hinting at just that fact, with the multiple player characters. And then there's also this weird little button in the interface featuring two players. And what's most exciting about a potential multiplayer feature is that it could take all kinds of forms in this game. Of course, it could just go the New Super Mario Bros. U route and allow you and your friends to play through any supported level together, which would be fun, but Super Mario Maker 2 could take it even further. Like, by making it a little bit more competitive? What if that coin counter from before could be used to create a challenge where whoever collects a certain amount of coins the fastest wins? Or maybe Nintendo could let us use those on and off blocks to make racing stages just like the ones in Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, where each player could screw with the other by turning different sets of blocks on or off. But hold up! Super Mario Maker is all about making stages, right? So what if you could actually make stages together? Which might be hinted at in this artwork featuring both Mario and Luigi seemingly creating a stage together. Granted, it would probably require a second Switch, but we think it'd be worth it. Especially if there were a competitive mode built around that idea. Like, what if you and a friend each designed half of a stage, meeting in the middle? At which point you would both race through the entire thing together. I think it'd be pretty fun to travel from the part that you created yourself into the unknown second half that your friend cooked up. Or maybe it could go the ultimate chicken horse route where you each take turns between building and playing a stage until it gets so crazy complicated that it's impossible for someone to finish a stage. Point is, there's a lot that Super Mario Maker 2 could do when it comes to multiplayer. And we can't wait to see what they might have in store for us. Hopefully. And there you have it, my top 10 hopes for Super Mario Maker 2. But what do you want to see? Let us know by posting in the comments below. Oh, and if you want even more, make sure to check out our hour and a half long analysis of the Super Mario Maker 2 reveal trailer. Trust me, there is a ton of stuff in there if you haven't watched it already. And with that, thanks for watching, and make sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already for tons more Super Mario Maker 2 and everything else Nintendo Switch. We'll catch you later, bye.